in the United States, I would say in the foreign policy establishment or even beyond it, there is the widespread judgment that the decade, decades-long effort to integrate China into global economic institutions largely did not succeed. If the hope was to make China more open and rules-abiding economically, more open politically, less aggressive in its foreign policy, that rather China cherry-picked its involvements and has emerged stronger, but not more moderate in its, in its behaviors. And that leads to a sense here that we therefore ought to become much more restrictive. Do you believe that we are learning the right lessons of history here, or we are overlearning them? I think you have to see this in context. China is going to develop. China is going to grow. I think the momentum is uh, enormous and unstoppable. Question is, how can this be integrated into the global system? Uh, you can try to block it and hold them back. Um, in which case, maybe you insulate yourself a little bit, but you set up for a troubled relationship for a very long time to come. Or you can try and work with them and fit them into the global system. They benefit from it, you benefit from it. And over time, you hope that a constructive evolution will happen. I don't think that turning China into a, a, a democracy is, was ever on the cards, nor was it the reason why um, we brought China into the WTO or engaged with China on many fronts. Uh, on its own merits, U.S. economies, the U.S. economy, U.S. consumers, U.S. MNCs have benefited enormously from what you have done cooperating with China. So, from the Chinese point of view, they will say, we benefited, we grew, you benefited, your companies prospered. There's nothing to improve. But, well, it is true both sides benefited, but the balance has shifted, and what used to be an economy one-tenth this size has now become an economy on some measures as big as the U.S., or maybe even bigger if you look at PPP. And then... What used to be wearable arrangements, concessions, are no longer politically wearable or economically sensible. And adjustments have to be made. And you have to adjust the situ to this situation. Uh, first, to gradually to treat China more and more as a not so developing but more closely developed economy. But secondly, also to give it some space to influence the global system. For example, shares in the IMF or influence in the World Bank. Uh, you don't want to change a whole system of the uh, international order or international law. These, this is a framework which everybody fits into. But now you've got big player and they do want to participate and you have to enable them to participate. And if you don't, they say, well, I'll have my own show. I, I, I can't get into the World Bank and have a bigger vote share. I'll have my AIIB, and many countries would like to join. And uh, I would like to cooperate with my neighbors. Let's have the Belt and Road Initiative. In principle, these are all right things to do, because this is a big country. You are going to want to cooperate with it. What, what is the mechanism? of the win-win cooperation. In practice, what is the difficulty? The difficulty is when a very big partner cooperates with a very small partner, it's very difficult to find that point of balance where both are equally happy. And it's very difficult for a big country to realize how huge its impact can be on the rest of the world, even when it doesn't intend it. And it's very difficult for the small country to maneuver and to gain from the uh, cooperation and the opportunities, and yet not from time to time be made proposals, offers which you cannot refuse. The Mexicans have a phrase, the US is our best friend, whether we like it or not. <laughs> and 
that's the dilemma.